Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm telling you, shit be going down in the fuel island. I mean, the fuel island is where yeah. it's at. When you want to see some crazy yeah. ass shit that happens, the fuel island is where it's at. I, I told you, I don't know if I told you about the time I had to go toe to toe with a with a truck driver in the fuel in the fuel island uh, because he wanted to um, be irate with me. This is while I was with the last company I was with, and I was in training status. So with that company, as a trainee, you're not allowed to move your vehicle. And your if your trainer is not in the vehicle with you, so I'm in it. So we have fuel, and we moved up to the to the line that you you pull up to after you fuel. And he went inside to you know because he had a ritual. Whenever we got food, fuel, he got off. He went inside, got his snacks, his ice, his tea, whatever his food, whatever he had to do. That's the time he does it after we fuel. So I'm sitting up there in the driver's seat and I'm talking on the phone to another truck driver and my windows are up and I just happened to glance over at my mirror and I see this, this tall white dude at the back of my trailer with the arms flail, flailing. Wait, was it? Wait, saying something wait, wait, with wait, an driver, angry face. Driver, wait, wait, wait. wait. Mm -hmm. Was he white for real? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, a, just want to make with sure. With mustache, beard, oh, okay. you know. Just, just want to make sure. With the mullet or just long hair, whatever it was. Okay. Just, just want to make and sure. So he about about six four, about six four, probably about a good two, maybe about a good two thirty pounds, probably about a good thirty something years old. I'm fifty. My 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 train is fifty five. So I'm sitting there, and I have to glance over, and I see him standing at the back of my trailer. Got the arms going, he mean mugging, he back there saying something. So I told my friend on the phone, I said, hold on a second. I said, somebody at the back of my trailer acting like an ass. Let me see what they're talking about. Let me call. I said, let me call you back. So I hangs up. I roll down my window, and he sees me rolling down my window, so he starts walking up to my window. So I said, um, excuse me. I said, what, what are you back there saying? So he comes up, you need to move this truck. I got things I got to go. I got things I got to do. Motherfucker, you, why do you, I said, who do you think you talking to? I said, I said, I don't give a goddamn what the fuck you got to do. Who do you think you talking to? Well, you better move this truck. I said, now, I said, now, guess what? Your mother ass going to have to wait anyway. I said, because I can't move the truck. And I said, had you came up here nicely and talked to me like a normal human being, I could have explained to you the situation. And I would have called my trainer to let my trainer know, you know, that I need to move this truck so that you can get out. I said, but however, since you want to be an asshole, your ass going to wait now. What do he say after that? So he rolls up the window. He didn't say shit. He just went on to the back of the truck, like, so he goes inside. I guess he, no. He goes back to his truck, and as he's walking back to his truck, my trainer, I see my trainer coming from the driver's side, walking up to, to the truck to, to get in. And my trainer gets in. I said, oh, John. I said, we got an asshole back here. He said, well, what's going on? I said, cause, I, cause mind you, I'm, I'm I, my, like my blood is boiling by the time he gets in the truck. Cause I'm livid. Cause I don't like no man disrespecting me like that. You don't talk to a lady like that. And you don't fucking talk to anybody like that. You can talk like you got some damn sense. I didn't even know the dude was back then, first of all. That's number one. Number two is, if you see a truck that's pulled up and you happen to see somebody is sitting there, what's the harm in just walking up to the driver and saying, hey, excuse me, um, I need to pull out. What's the harm in that? It ain't gonna cost you nothing to act like you got some damn sense. So my so my trainer gets in. He said, "Don't worry about it," because he's a very like, well, I wouldn't say he's a very mild tempered guy. He's mild tempered until the seatbelt is choking him. <laughs> then he has a fit. So he gets in, and we start pulling pulling off. The guy behind me waits until he has just enough room to swing out to go around. And as we're and mind you, I'm moving slow. I'm not in a rush. I'm not just, you know, stomping on the gas pedal. 
I'm easy, you know, because other trucks, I don't know who else might need to pull out. I don't want to just be. So by the time we get up to where we can, like, go out the exit, this dude pulls his truck up alongside mine and blocks us in. And he's still talking shit. So now at this point, my trainer's like, oh, now he's really asking for it. <laughs> so now my trainer, I'm 5'3". My trainer's 5'5", five, five, right? Maybe 5'6". But he ain't much bigger than me. White guy, my trainer. He's also an Army veteran. So he gets off the truck as the guy is talking shit. Now, mind you, he's still mild-tempered. Like, he ain't getting off the truck. What the you doing? Doing none of that. And he's not exhibiting any aggressive behaviors in his body language, on his facial expression, in his tone of voice. So when he gets off the truck and the guy speaks, off the truck. He opens his passenger side door and tells his dog, sick him. Now, John, by this time, John done walked around the front of our truck and he sees the dog get down. He ain't changed. He didn't miss a step. He's still walking his way over to the other side. Man, the guy's truck. The dog, the dog just gets down. He's happy to be off the truck. He's sniffing. But I don't know that. All I see is that the dog is down and it's out of my out of my line of sight. And I said, that. I get off the truck. So I goes around. By the time I make it around, the dog is over in the grass, sniffing the grass. And he's standing there with this guy towering down over him, just 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 going just going ballistic, right? And all I hear him saying is, you can stop spitting in my face. You're, you're spitting in my face. He hasn't raised his voice. He has not went to no aggressive stance. He has not, he, he, you know, his face still pretty much looks the same. So I see this. Now, mind you, my blood was already boiling. So now it's even further heightened because I'm like, I can't see. I don't know what's going to happen. If this dude attacks him, then where, you know, ain't shit about to happen on my watch. This is my fellow veteran. He's my trainer. And I need his ass so that we can continue on down the road. I ain't about to let this go down. If this hit him, he gonna have to fight both of us. That's like quick thought in my head. That's what I'm thinking. So I get down, I hear him saying that the man is spitting in his face. So I put my hand up in the man's face, palm side to his face, and I took get in the truck. I said, I got this. Don't ask me why, I'm, I'm just that, I'm that chick. Cause in my mind, I'm thinking, this is too mild manner, mannered. This dude might hit him. This dude might not be crazy enough to hit me, you know, opposed to hitting. So I tell him, I said, back up. I said, don't even worry about it. I got this. Go get in the truck. So in the meantime, people are starting to look. I don't get, I guess somebody, maybe the manager, maybe somebody on the camera, I don't know. A manager comes out. But I, by this time, I'm basically standing in front of this dude up in his face with my arms crossed, like folded across my chest. And I, I'm in my, in my uh, attack stance, and I said, what the f are you going to do? Try me. I said, I got three brothers bigger than you, and I ain't got a problem knocking any one of them down. So trust me, I won't have a problem knocking you down. What you want to do? I said, because you out here being an asshole for no reason. You act like you ain't got no home training. You act like you don't know how to talk to people like you got some goddamn sense. You want to sit out here and try to stick a dog on somebody. Your dog is over here sniffing the damn grass. The dog, you know, so I'm just going off. The manager of Love's coming because we had a love. So the manager of the Love's comes out and he's trying to, now he comes to me. Calm down, calm down. You know, they always come to the black person first. And I said, no, that. I'm not calming down. I said, because that right there don't have no goddamn manners. I said, he comes out here. He's going on belligerent. He act like he don't know how to talk to people. All he had to do was ask nicely. I said, I could have told him what the deal was. I said, but then he want to try to stick his dog on my, on my train. The dog would have attacked him or not. Don't tell me to calm down. You better go over there and deal with him. So the man, the, the love's manager, he's still trying to stay calm. So it's like, come on, Chas, you know, Chastity, come on, let's get in the truck or whatever. I was like, no, that. I said, because what if he would have hit you or something? I said, he out here acting like a man. Like, you know, so the guy, so, you know, we, we, we get back in our truck. The guy gets back in his truck, but he's still talking shit. My window down, and I was like, your mama, 
He was like, this, that, and that. I said, your mama's a bitch. I said, you could, I, I said, I could tell you ain't got no home. I said, your mama probably don't even like, like it. He was like, and so he said, no, I didn't call his mother a bitch. He called his mother. He was like, I said, I said, um, I said, your mother probably don't even like your ass. I said, look at your dog. I said, your dog was just thankful to get the from up under you. He probably used to you acting like an asshole. He was, and so I said something about his mama. He's like, my mama's a bitch. I said, damn. I said, I can tell because look at the damn child she raised. So we just going back and forth. I said, you doing all that shit talking. I said, if you was in such a rush, why are you still sitting here? Asshole. So finally he pulls off. So he pulls off. We, he pulls off. We pull out. I'm not. He pulls off, we pull out, and by the time we pull out behind him, he's over, he done pulls over into the middle. You know how they got the yellow lines, the little median? Sometimes trucks can pull up in there. So he's pulling up in there, because I guess he probably didn't even set his, his his directions or set whatever he needed to set up, you know, to get back on the road. I said, look at this shit. I said, all of that shit, and that still ain't gone. I told him, I said, John, I, so now I'm trying to calm down. I said, John, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I wasn't going to get off the truck. I said, but once you went out of my line of sight, I said, all bets were off. I said, because if something happened to you, where was that going to leave me? I said, and as a fellow veteran, I ain't about to let that shit go down. I said, if that was going to fight you, he was going to have to fight both of us. I said, so I'm sorry. I said, I hope this shit don't get me fired. He was like, don't worry about it. He's like, I already had in my mind what I was going to do. He was like, because, you know, he's the type of guy, like, he's a thinker. You know what I'm saying? So... He's like, oh, I was—I already knew what I was gonna do if he would have tried to attack me. I said, well, John, I said, I guess you would have went high and I would have went low, but he would have been fighting both of us. Standing up for your, standing up for your uh, trainer, veteran, and teammate right there, man. Hell of a story. I didn't, ins- I didn't expect any of this. I, I thought it was just gonna be, you know, dude, come up on the side of you. You know, kind of mouth a little bit of shit and then go ahead about his business. But it it, it went from zero to 100 to 200 real quick. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something about me. I've, throughout my life, I've, I've grown up and I have been on numerous occasions verbally attacked, physically attacked, sexually attacked by men, related and unrelated. So I don't deal easily with an aggressive man. I, 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 I don't, I don't, um, I don't shudder away from an aggressive man. I, I don't, I don't run and hide and, you know, call for help with an aggressive man. When I am, when I'm, when I am presented with an aggressive man, I attack that. I don't get where I'm at, who it is. Like, unless you got a gun to my head, you come for me, I'm coming back. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me wanna track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama wanna get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy, bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes, look Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.